Hey, how's it going everyone? I hope you're having a kick-ass week and whoo I'm super freaking excited because today I'm blending the UJ SSM. Check it out guys, this is a beautiful sight. Woohoo! Look at that! Welcome everyone, I'm Jesse and this is Still It, the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So if that's what you're into, if that's what you dig, have a look around the channel. If it's right for you, if you like what you see, have a think about subscribing and giving the videos a thumbs up. That'd be choice. Woo! All right, guys. I currently have uh, 40 jars of UJSSM sitting in front of me, ready to be blended back together, and I cannot wait. This is the spirit run from last week's video, so if you haven't seen that, feel free to go check that out and come on back to this one. But today the plan is to go through, taste everything, smell everything, decide what's making the cut and what's not, and get it all blended back together. Just a reminder too guys, I am doing more live streams now, so if you want to get notifications of that, hit the little bell down below, that'll tell you on YouTube that I'm going live, and if that doesn't work for you, there is a link down below for the Stillit mailing list as well. Alright guys, so you probably remember that I did a video on uh, blending like this ages ago for uh, the FFV, and I laid it all out in one big long continuous line and used a system of moving it further away from me or closer to me depending on how much I liked it. If you haven't seen that video I will stick a card up top for you now as well. But I have decided that today I'm going to do it a different way. Just to try something new, to show something new and see if I like it better or worse, see how it works for me. But the idea is that instead of doing it sort of visually by where I set the jars, I'm just going to be keeping notes. I've also got my uh, hydrometers to test to be honest, I'm not going to be making decisions based on the ABV, but I do want a general idea of the ABV as I go down the line so I can blend it back or proof it down with water uh, into my little tasting glass at about 35%. The water is also going to be nice for uh, taking a little sip in between, cleansing the palate out a little. Uh, and I also have some water for cleaning the glass and dumping it. And over here I've also got what is the uh, beginnings of a faints jar, so I can use that uh, to tip the remnants of my glass into. May as well save it and run it through the still again, right? Alright team, so what I am going to do is aim for what I think to be the middle of the hearts. Go there first and start sort of tasting up and down from that point so I don't blow my palate out as fast as I did last time. Um, but I think also what I'm going to do is just smell everything to start with and uh, let that kind of guide me and let that help me pick where to start. So, this ain't going to be pretty, but let's give it a whirl. <laughs> so I am going to go with jar 17 as my best guess for the middle of hearts. Yeah, doesn't smell like alcohol at all. Sweet, corny, small amount of butterscotch. Um, I do just want to give that a test, give myself an idea. So that 40 to 70. So that's pretty much exactly 70%. And I am going to write that uh, down on my pad just so I've got all the information in one spot. Definitely hearts. So let's go up towards the heads. Let's jump up to 14 and see if that's still. Yep, still hearts. And um, let's go to 11. Yep, still hearts. All I'm doing is looking for where I think the heads turn into the hearts and where the hearts turn into the tails to try and find those transitions and sort of mark them so I can look out for them when I start tasting as well. I am going to taste every single jar that I want to keep. If it smells like arse, like I'm assuming this does, yeah, that's pretty funky. I'm not going to be tasting it. <laughs> So I'm thinking this is jar number eight and I'm thinking this is around about where I'm going to start seeing um, a little bit of a change. The mellow corn sweetness has subsided a little bit and now it is turning more into a little bit of a fake sort of fruity estery smell at eight. So let's go back and smell nine. There's a little bit of that in nine but very little bit in ten. So I'm thinking, oh, let's go to 
seven as well, why not, right? Can you see that? There's a dead fly in the bottom. <laughs> Excellent. And six. Yeah, okay. So, it's definitely somewhere between six and ten. So I am going to mark those down on my sheet as uh, sort of somewhere where I'm going to be looking for the transition for hearts to heads uh, when I start tasting later on. And start heading towards the tails and see if I can pick that up. So I know, let's go to 20. So there's not so much sweetness in this one. And it's definitely starting to change. That's interesting. I wonder what ABV that is. About 69%. Just so you know, I am washing this in between as well. I do not want to be taking tails and putting it into the heads and so on and so forth. Um, so it's worth washing your instruments well between each use and between each jar, as well as when you start tasting to rinse your mouth out too. But that was 69%. So I actually, coming off the still, I marked a couple of jars uh, at 22 and 23. So that would have been in the last video. And I did that because I noticed a change as it was coming off the still, it started to be a little different than the, the the hearts run was pretty much similar for about one, two, three, four. So about 13 jars. So what's that? Maybe about five liters. It was pretty similar. Uh, and then it started to change. And like I said in the last video, guys, I do try to pick my cuts as they're coming off the still. Not that I'm going to make decisions based on that, but it's an exercise in trying to learn how things differ straight off the still to when they've breathed out a little bit like this. But I'm making guesses on the still so that when I start, you know, batting 100%, I know that I can switch to that method. So I can't really smell the difference now in these, which is interesting. They don't have any bad aroma to them. Less corn, but that's about it. Moving on to 26. It's not too much funky going on there. Let's go to 30. Okay, so now I'm starting to get a little bit of that sort of the wet dog toe jam come through a little bit, a little bit of wet cardboard as well. And 32, I'm guessing is pretty much well and truly. Yeah, so by 32 it's starting to get pretty funky. But I have been told with UJSSM that it is worth looking in the low tails because that there can be a couple of little spots where it cleans up and gives you some gold. So, well, I think the easiest way to do this is literally just to move this stuff out of the way. You know what? They all smell like wet dog to me. Maybe, maybe there's something between 29 and 22 that might be worth picking up, but I guess that's going to come more when we start tasting it, really. <sighs> so, I'm a little bit suspect of everything from 22 on. It smells okay to about 24, but like I said, I did mark those off the still, so I'm just going to be cautious of that area too, in case it's something that is in the flavor, not in the, uh, the aroma now. Just in case. So from 22 through to about 30 is the uh, the stuff that I'm sus for the tails. From 30 on, I, I don't think. Maybe 31 actually. Yeah, 32 is definitely getting the wet dog st stuff going on. Um, but let's take a reading on 31 and see what ABV that is sitting at. Eh? Bam. That's down to 45%. So that's interesting. 45%. All right, team, so that means purely by just the number of jars that I'm guessing I'm going to keep that uh, 16 is pretty much splat bang in the middle of the heart. So what I would like to do is start at 16, work my way towards the tails. And the reason I'm going to do that is for me personally, uh, tasting the higher alcohols, the more sort of hot alcohols blows my palate out to a point where I can't recognize flavors that I either like or don't like a lot quicker than the uh, the oily, um, mucky stuff down in the tails. So I'd rather head down towards the tails um, and do that just in case I do go a little bit high and blow my palate too quickly at the top end. So let's get stuck in. So I know that uh, 16 is pretty much 70%. So essentially I just want one to one. I'm even going to be as anal as to wash the spoon before dipping it in the water because I don't want to take that water and mix everything in there as well. So I'm just going to give that a rinse as well give it a little second to uh homogenize interesting so now that the uh with the water in there it's actually opened it up a bit not in the way i was expecting i was expecting more butterscotch and corn it's gone almost uh more grassy which is interesting 
that went down the wrong way. <coughs> that was not the reaction that that taste deserved. So it's fairly, it's actually kind of neutral that jar, which is interesting, jar 16. But there's nothing offensive with it whatsoever. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to be keeping that one. Rinse your glass, rinse your mouth, and let's go 17. Interesting, really interesting. Wow, they're so different. <laughs> right next to each other, the first two I tasted. This is more of the full sweet, um, not oily, but buttery as in like buttery wine, a little bit more corn, more what I was expecting from this, but still no butterscotch. Interesting. A little bit of butterscotch actually when I exhale, but still very nice. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. So 17, there's no reason for me not to put the whole jar in there basically. On to 18. Mm, so this has got more of a, a warming note on the like a warming sensation on the nose not heat but just like gentle nice warming which is really nice and I did enjoy that from the other UJ SSM actually wow okay that's the best so far <laughs> keeping that that's 19 and actually I just want to take a um, ABV reading just to see if I'm still tasting it about the right spot so that is a smidge under 70 percent so close enough to not be really any different where's my spoon pretty similar to 18 oh there's that butterscotch guys not a whole lot of it but more of it mm-hmm mm -hmm. number 20 hmm there's something in there that is familiar to me and i don't know what it is huh it's almost like aniseed this Every time I do this, it blows my mind at how different each one of these jars can be. It's, it's absolutely crazy. It blows my mind. <laughs> it really does. It makes me kind of wonder sometimes if it's in your head and if you're just making shit up. Which is why I do like to, like when I find something like that, I'm going to write something that's totally unexpected or something that's um, really good or really bad. Write it down, leave it for a while, come back to it and see if you can still taste it later on. Or whether you're just making shit up. It's like part way between aniseed and and mixed spice, maybe? I don't know. Interesting though. I can't quite put my finger on that. But nice. Once again, we will be keeping jar 20. This is uh, where I'm expecting it to start getting interesting, sort of between 20 and 26. You know what? I'm guessing you guys are going to get a little bit sick of me uh, calling out every single freaking jar for 40 jars. <laughs> So I'll tell you what, I'm going to taste down uh, the rest of the line and I'll come back with a summary between uh, jar 21 and where I think the tails kick in. Woo! Okay guys, I have gone all the way down into the tails, which may have been a mistake because it was some funk down there. But here's what I have found. 20 and 21 was sweet, uh, but it was starting to get a touch of bitterness to it. And when I say bitter from here on in, I'm talking, it's a strange flavour that I do get in a lot of commercial bourbons which I actually don't dislike. It's not a tannic bitter, it's kind of somewhere between, it's almost like salty and bitter at the same time. I guess like to me it's just kind of that bourbon bite, not alcohol bite, but there's just there's something that's a little bit not entirely friendly about it and I actually like that. I don't like a super sweet, cloyingly sweet butterscotch and maple syrup sort of bourbon. That's not so much my jam. So if I was trying to make like a super smooth, insanely friendly bourbon, I would probably be cautious of including some of these jars because of it. But because I don't mind that flavor, I will probably use at least some of the jars that include the bitter. Maybe not the whole jar though, we'll see how it goes. 22 was the same, but more bitter. Um, 23 actually had a little bit of funk showing up on the nose, but the taste was actually really nice. 24 and 25 were just kind of nondescript. I wouldn't say they tasted like a neutral spirit. They still had a little bit of corn in them. Unoffensive, but uh, ordinary as well. But I, I think I'll be using those. 26 was bad it had heaps of funk on it and quite a lot of the bitter so i think i'm just not going to use 26 at all i did not like that 28 was starting to get a bit tailsy but not as bad as 26 but it had some really nice fruity sweet sort of notes to it not butterscotch or corn 
but flavors that I think might kind of lift the rest of the spirit. So I, I don't know about that one because it was quite funky and tailsy on the nose, but not uh, on the palate. 29 was less funky and more sweet and enjoyable. 30 was horrible, huge funk, like toe jams, wet dog, cardboard, all that jazz. 31, apparently I, um, I missed, I'll have to go back and taste that. <laughs> 32, the bitter started coming back and the funk as well at the same time. That was not enjoyable at all. 33, however, had a little bit of the bitter, a little bit of the funk, but it had a fair bit of butterscotch, so I may look at blending some of that in. 34 had buttery, like a buttery mouthfeel, not a flavor, but that sort of oily and slick, but not in a bad way, kind of like a um, an oak aged wine, I guess. So I think the mouthfeel of that might help to sort of give the rest of it body, if that makes sense. So I like that. 35, what just straight up tasted like ass. It was horrible. Not going anywhere near that. Not going anywhere near 36. Uh, and just, just uh, to let you know, that is now down to about 20% when I get to there. Um, and there on out, I'm not going to be touching a thing. <laughs> Time to head back to jar 16 and I'm going to taste 16 again because I know that I've put that in my memory bank kind of as a standard. Once again guys I'm going to go and taste all the way up into the heads, get a good idea of what's there and I will check back in with you once I've done so so you don't have to watch me jar by jar. I'm back and I have worked my way from 16 up towards the heads. So 17, 16 and 15 are all pretty similar. Solidly hearts but nothing special to talk about. Definitely in. Number 14 was really interesting. It had this really cool, um, fresh, light, crisp sort of thing going on. And to be honest, I don't quite know how to describe it, but this is going to sound really weird. But it just kind of felt like a really early morning spring day when you know it's going to be hot later on. But right now it's crisp and you just feel really alive when you're up, you know, before dawn or something like that. I don't know why. That's what it reminded me of. I wish I had more of that because I think that could... Um, juxtapose really nicely with the sweet sort of more oily characteristic that this is in general. Anyway that's going in for sure. Number 13 had a really nice warming quality to it. Not heat, not prickliness, not um, rubbing alcohol or anything like that. Warming but it came with, this is hard for me to describe, but the butterscotch twang. <laughs> so not the sweetness, not the butteriness, but that weird, it's almost like sweet and sour to butterscotch, though it's not sour. Man, I talk some smack when I do this, don't I? I have not been drinking this, I have been spitting it out, I promise. Number 11 had that same sort of butterscotchy twang without the sweetness and the butter and the corn. But it also had a little bit of saltiness, which once again, I'm not against. I think that's cool. Um, and it was still, you know, I think still definitely going to be kept. Number 10 is where it starts heading towards heads uh, and I get a really nice apple flavor off number 10 but not the fake estuary um, heads fruit flavors. It just tasted like a moderately ripe, almost like a, a green apple. It was a little bit light and a little bit prickly but it did have some nice flavors in there so I probably will use that. 8 had this amazing mouthfeel. It was light and warming, but not prickly. It was less prickly than nine. Uh, and it had a really nice sort of crisp, fresh cereal flavor to it, which is really awesome. But from there on up is where it starts turning into the serious prickly, uh, rubbing alcohol, numbing um, sort of anesthetic sensation in your mouth. So I'm not gonna go up any further than that. Eight is going to be my last. And whether or not I use all of eight or just some of it, I have yet to decide. All right guys, what I need to do next is just start blending and the plan for me today is to go along and grab everything that I know I want in, blend that first and then go back and check some of the things that I may or may not blend in. And when it's really a difficult situation or if there's a flavor in there that I'm not sure how it's gonna interact with the rest of it, I may actually make up a little tincture in the glass, um, you know, a, a spoonful of the whole blend and a couple of drops of what I'm thinking of adding. Does it make it better? Yes, then we keep it. Does it make it worse? Then no, we're not gonna keep it. But before we do, I just wanna give a quick overview 
of the flavors that I'm picking up for UJSSM to look out for when you're doing these blends and cuts yourself. In the heads, what you're looking for is the fake fruity estery, like starburst lolly type flavors on the nose. And on the mouth, it's going to feel very light, um, very almost like it's evaporating off your tongue rather than the tails, which are gonna feel more oily. Uh, and it is also gonna have this prickly harshness on your tongue. Remember that I am proofing everything down and I'm trying to proof it down to 35% no matter what I'm tasting. So it's not the high ABV that's giving you the prickliness on the tongue. It's those alcohols and other chemicals, the higher alcohols and other chemicals that you don't want in your drink. The stuff that's nasty, the stuff that's gonna be giving you a headache, those are the things that are making it feel anesthetic-y, pins and needle-y, prickly, um, it feels like your tongue's being attacked, even though the ABV is only at 35%. Now, I know that some of the flavors and the aromas that come off the heads can be tempting, but it is a trap. <laughs> it really is, guys. I have tasted a couple of spirits that I know have been mixed with a lot of heads in them, and at the end of the day, they're just not that pleasant. If you find something up there that's really interesting, maybe, maybe you want to take a little bit of it. Make sure you're not going too high into the four shots or anything like that. But those fake estery sort of fruity flavors, they trick you when you smell them into thinking they're nice and sweet. Uh, but that's really not going to come out that way when you mix it into the rest of your spirit. Down at the other end for UJSSM, this is what I've found. I start to notice the bitterness show up in UJSSM before the toe jam, wet dog, nastiness, and it looks like that bitterness fades off, and then there's a couple of jars that are kind of interesting before that, um, that real tailsy wet dog, toe jam, wet cardboard, funk shows up. And I've also noticed with this run that those funky tails show up as more of an aroma all the way up until I start seeing uh, the oil um, and particulate sort of stuff floating on top of the jars. And that's where the really funky bad smell turned into a really funky bad taste as well. So some of those tails just before that have a little bit of a funk on the nose, but they've got some really nice flavors. So I may be tempted by those. Anyway guys, I'm gonna go grab my big old stainless steel pot and get to mixing. Go on the big pot. So I am literally going to go down the list. I'm gonna start in the middle once again, work my way up, work my way down. Anything that has a tick, I know that I'm putting in totally. Anything with a cross, I am more than likely gonna dump. Anything with a divide sign, I have put that there to signal that I want to think about that some more and potentially taste it as a mix of everything else. 16 goes in, as does 17. 18, and 19. Now 20 was the jar with the aniseed. Yeah, that's weird, it's so there. It's actually not dissimilar to the um, aniseed-y licorice flavor that shows up in FFV, or my FFV anyway. Hmm. I want that. All right, let's go back the other way. So, so we're good up to 11. I'm keeping everything all the way up to there. I'm gonna put 10 in as well. That was the one with that nice sort of um, apple flavor to it. Seven, eight, and nine is where I may or may not take a little bit of something. I may not. So, back the other way. 21. 22, I need to have a think about. 23 is in. 24 and 25 were the two that were not offensive, but they were also just a little bit eh. So, basically, I guess I'm kind of diluting the good flavors down. <laughs> Call me a little greedy. <laughs> Number 26, I am not putting in, there was some funk in that. 28, I'm not doing, but 29 had less funk. Let me just double check that. Yeah, there's almost no funk in that. That's so weird how it changes like that, how it shows up and then goes away and then comes back again. It's bizarre. Anyway, so 29 is going in. Everything after that is a little bit suspect and I may or may not be taking a little bit of it. Quick break, I'm gonna go and take all the little dregs out of these jars uh, that have good stuff in them. A Couple of drops out of every one, gotta keep it, I want it. <laughs> now I wanna take a taste of the blend as it is right now, just to kinda of get a baseline and um, get ready to start adding things in or not uh, and, and see where I go from there. Hmm. Okay, so I gotta say I'm relatively happy with that. 
the one thing that I do find super interesting is that as I was tasting through the jars, I only really found one jar that really had kind of butterscotch in it. I did find other jars that had sort of elements of it, I guess. I had the uh, the sweet in some, the corn sweet in some, the butteriness, uh, both the mouthfeel and kind of the flavor in a couple. But what I'd never really thought about is that if you have all those components and you add them back together, then you get butterscotch again, right? <laughs> anyway, now that it is blended back together, I am getting more butterscotch than what I would have guessed from the jars, but I'm not getting nearly as much butterscotch as I had hoped for after I had done the stripping run. The stripping run tasted like straight up butterscotch. It was big, it was bold, um, it whacked you over the head, and even though that may not be my favorite for a bourbon, that may not be exactly what I want out of a bourbon, it was quite interesting and it was, uh, and it was bold. So while this is quite nice, I'm a little bit disappointed that it doesn't have more butterscotch in it, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. All right guys, I just found something really interesting. This is jar number 39, literally the last thing that came off the still last night. It's way down at about sort of 12 to 13%. I didn't even bother tasting it or smelling it or anything. I just didn't go there. And for some reason, I decided to give it a smell very little funk. Interesting. Very little funk once again, but it's acidic. And that got me wondering, what would that do to this? <laughs> so I took a spoon of this, which is at just under 70%, added a spoon of this to get, I don't know, 37% or something. And hey presto, more butterscotch, which is really, really interesting. <laughs> I wonder if it's a pH thing. I wonder if it's just adding a little of acidity to it, you know, like putting lemon into something brings the flavor out. I don't know what it is, but I gotta say I like it and I kind of wish that I went down even lower and took another jar or two to see what else was way down there. I don't know if that is what people are talking about when they say that there's gold way down in the tails in UJSSM. I was sort of thinking more around the 30 to 20% range, but who knows, maybe that is what they were talking about and I didn't read things well enough. Let me know guys, I don't know if this is a thing or not. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe it's just my personal preference and my personal tastes. But I gotta say, I am gonna be putting that in here as well because even at a one to one ratio, like no water cutting it down, just that, it's quite nice. So that whole thing's going in. <laughs> All right team, time to have a fish around and see if there is anything else worth mixing into this. I decided that number nine is not going in because it is hot. And I also know from previous experience that if I leave this on the table, I'm probably gonna talk myself into putting it in. And then two or three days from now, I'm probably gonna regret it. So I'm just gonna put it straight into the fence jar. There we go, no coming back from that. <laughs> number eight on the other hand, this is the one with the really cool sort of cereal flavor to it, and I do want that. That also, interestingly enough, even though it was higher into the heads uh, than jar number nine, obviously, it was less prickly, less anesthetic, less numbing on the tongue, so I'm happy to put that in. And the reason I say that, and the reason that I wasn't checking it or anything like that is because basically it didn't have a downside to it. The ones that I want to test before I add in are the ones where either I think I might be a little bit crazy or where I know that there's a smell in it that I don't like but there's a flavor in it that I do like or vice versa you know then I think it's worth testing it to see to see if you really want it in your blend everything on the higher side of eight is not going in that's just that's just where it's being cut it's not worth it to me so I don't need to do any more work there what I am going to do is go back to 22 because that was right in the middle of all the good stuff and I flagged that as being not so good. So I'm gonna taste it again just as a bit of a Muppet check to make sure that I wasn't just making something up for the heck of it. It does smell different, almost like chemically, like not quite chlorine-y but something familiar about like a public pool or something. Yeah, it's just got this strange like almost chlorine-y taste to it but not like a weird fake chemical flavor. It's not horrible, but I don't, I just don't think I really want that in there. So, and it doesn't have anything particularly nice about it that I want to save 
Faints it is. Same with jar number 26. That was also flagged. And for this one, I was saying that there was uh, some funk in it. What I did also mention that there's a nice buttery note in there. So this is one of those jars where I think it is worth tasting by itself again to see to see if I taste the same thing as last time. Maybe I was inaccurate then. Double check and then if I'm still curious about it I'll try mixing a little bit of this into a, a sample of that. See I'm not getting funk off it now. No I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know what it could be is that I've realized that I've been sitting here and tasting everything with the worst offenders of the tails right in front of me. So if they're kind of wafting up this way while I'm smelling something, maybe I'm picking it up like that. But there's really nothing wrong with the 26. And it does have a nice mouthfeel, so that is going in. All right, what have we got left? Number 28 I flagged as well as having too much sort of taily funk to it. But I did say that it has a really nice sweet fruity flavor to it. And once again, I'm not getting tails off this right now. So I want to taste it again. There is the slightest hint of tails. Not on the mouth, not on the mouth at all, just on the aroma. And now I'm even questioning myself as to whether that's there or not. So you know what? This is going in as well. Even the, the, the tiny amount of tails that I may or may not be able to get from that is... Um, is minuscule to me compared to the delicious flavor that was in that. 30 was horrible, not going near that. 31 I actually didn't taste, I don't think, or if I did, I didn't leave any notes one way or the other, so let's do that now. Pretty tailsy. I don't think that's worth it. I'm gonna put that aside though. All of these, I know I'm not gonna use. They're nasty, they're going in faints. Get them out of the way so they don't distract me and they're not stinking the place up. These three are the only three left on the table that I may be using a little of. Now, 32 is funky, but it's got a bit of butteriness to it. Uh, 33 is really funky, but it's got butterscotch in it. And 34 uh, is back to being sort of buttery and funky. So I'm gonna taste each of these again. You know what, after tasting those again, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna go with 34, there's just a little bit too much funk. But 32 has this kick-ass mouthfeel, and 33 has this, this really nice sort of disharmony butterscotch thing going on. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a little tincture up between uh, my blend as it stands right now and these two, and see what happens if I add just a little bit in. I'm just going to go and wash my glass well before I do that though. Alright team, so here's the plan. This glass is my blend by itself, but proofed down to 35%. This glass is the blend plus a couple of drops of each of 32 and 33 blended down to 35% as well. Is there a difference? It's so hard to pick, it's really similar, which makes sense, you know, like literally a, like a, two drops of each of these in here. I'll add a little bit more actually to see. I think it is a very, very slight improvement, like minuscule. I can't taste the tails in it. I can't, oh, actually, hmm. Now that the glass has sat for a little while, I feel like I can smell the tails. You know what, it's not worth it, man. I'm gonna be so bummed if I make this and I can smell tails in it at the end. So, Tricky, tricky. This is not a greed thing. I'm not worried about having more of it. I'm worried about I've got the opportunity to make it better if I could, um, you know, pony up and just do it. But you know what? It's not worth it to me. It's really not. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. <laughs> it's done. This is it. This is all that's going in here. This is my blend. And I got to say, I am pretty happy with it. Like I said, I hoped there would be a little bit more butterscotch, but it is what it is, guys. I really think that for me, adding that last jar in there is what made this. It took it from kind of sweet and a little bit one dimensional and it gave it this big kick up the backside, made it jump out a whole lot. It's sort of got more vibrancy now. So I'm really, really interested to see what happens with this when I get some oak into it. At a guess, looking at the table, I'm guessing I kept a smidgen 
over half of everything that I distilled. Maybe a little bit more than that. Um, but that, just as an idea for, for what I'm keeping. Uh, once again, guys, this sort of thing is subjective. It is based on what you like, what you like to drink. There are things that everyone generally can agree on is that you don't want heads in your drink. You don't want that rubbing alcohol, the numbing, prickly, pins and needly feeling on your tongue. You don't want a big ass jar of ass crack, sweaty toe jams and jock strap. That's just me, but you know, maybe you guys are into that. I don't know. <laughs> but everything in between is somewhat subjective, team. So remember to take things like this video with a grain of salt and do it the way that you want it. Make the whiskey that you want to drink and make it the way that you want to make it. Anyway, team, I need to go and get all of this into the faints jar. I need to get that into some glass so I can start oaking it later on. I'll make a video for that for you as well. But right now here, it is one o'clock in the morning and I need bed. <laughs> Just secretly, I'm feeling a smidge tipsy after tasting all of this. I was spitting most of it out, but yeah, happens every time. The joy of blending, guys. <laughs> Anyway guys, if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up for me, that really helps me out. Feel free to share the video around with your friends or whoever else wants it. I will catch you guys next time, and to be honest, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing. But, I'll see you then. See ya!